standing in front of Malaysia's most iconic buildings, the Petronas Towers. There are lots of different vantage points around the park so that you can get your shot with the Petronas Towers and this is one of them. The Petronas Towers took six years to build and they were the tallest building in Asia until Taipei 101 took them over. And I've been to Taipei 101. And these are more impressive. So these towers were designed by an Argentinian architect named Cesar Pelli. Represent. Represent because why? Where? <laughs> Oh, because I grew up in Argentina. <laughs> there you go. The double-decker sky bridge here connects the two towers together. It's quite awesome. So my question is, is this a water fountain or can I actually go swimming in there? Malacca right now and it is night time so we are about to head over to Jonker Street where they have one of the biggest night markets I have ever seen. It is a great place to find food and go shopping so let's head over there. Nothing better to do at the night market, the Joker Street night market, than to indulge in street food. And we've got a refreshing little dish right down here. Take a look at it. Different kinds of jellies and beans and shaved ice with sweet, maybe some sweet coconut milk and cane syrup. Oh, this is never good. Perfect way to beat the heat. Here we've ordered something that's called a carrot cake. I am not seeing any carrots so far, but it looks really tasty. Let's see what this is. It smells good. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. How would you describe it? Not carrot. I would say <laughs> it's like a pad thai without the noodles. Like you okay. have the bean sprouts, you have a little bit of tofu, some egg, peanuts. Awesome. So, I don't know where the carrot name comes from. <laughs> some sugar cane juice. It's really sweet and refreshing. I love that they gave us lots of ice. Perfect. Perfect for a hot night like this.
7.20 in the morning and I've been dragged out of bed by someone to go visit the Batu Caves early in the day. And how are we getting there? Mm -hmm. We are taking the commuter train from KL Central. One ringgit each. It was cheap. <laughs> visiting the Batu Caves. It's only 13 kilometers north of Kuala Lumpur and this is an important Hindu shrine. The caves takes its name from the Batu River and is dedicated to Lord Murugan. Looks like it's feeding time for the pigeons over here. Money or food couldn't buy you friends. Here I am on step. Number one, I've only got 272 more of these bad boys to climb. Hawks or little monkeys, and this is my first time seeing monkeys up close. So it's all I'm taking pictures of. Forget the temple. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, 272 steps later, we have made it to the top. So this is actually my third time coming to the Batu Caves, but this is by far the earliest I've come. And what a difference it makes. There's hardly anyone here. It feels like we have the place to ourselves. We've had intimate encounters with pigeons, monkeys, boosters, there's a performance going on. My tip to anyone, come early. We beat the first two of the bus group here. Look at them, I'm coming. <laughs> ourselves with a vegetarian Indian feast. I swear I must have lost half my water and body weight going up and down those fancy caves. Okay, so I ordered myself a delicious roti which I'm going to 
enjoy right now. I am starving. I was told it was going to be a short, oh, it's a 10 minute walk from Chinatown. We're right around the corner and we've been walking for 45 minutes in circles and then uphill. And I am covered in sweat and a bird just flew by me. So we're at KL Bird Park, the largest walk-in aviary in the world. And that means the birds can fly freely around the park. home to over 3,000 birds and more than 200 species and so far we have seen lovebirds, flamingos, peacocks and birds that we don't even know what they are. feeding area and as you can see the birds get a really nice diet of papayas and bananas. Jurassic Park with birds instead of dinosaurs. So I'm gonna choose two birds and pose with them. Wish me luck. So this is the selection you've got. How about that one? Are you friendly? Uh -huh. yep. friendly. Having fun. <laughs> You're great. So we can feed lorries for like two ringgit, which is about you know, 70 cents, so why not? So Sam, tell us about your new friends here. Who I've are got they? four little friends and we're having a feeding party right now. Hello.
this was a really fun experience. Although it's not the cheapest thing to do in Kale, it's something we both highly recommend. And wear bug spray. Cat cafes seem like a novelty to most, but certainly not for us. Visiting Perfect Cat Cafe in Georgetown, Penang, Malaysia marked our third cat cafe outing in Asia. Previously, we had visited one in Seoul, South Korea, and another in Bangkok, Thailand. The format for this recently opened cat cafe is similar to the two others we visited. For the opportunity to spend time with cats, you have to purchase 18 ringgit, the equivalent of $6 worth of snacks, desserts, and or drinks. You can freely pet and play with the cats, but picking them up or entering their sleep zone is not permitted. This particular cat cafe had its strong and weak points. A smaller and more intimate space was certainly a bonus. However, there were less cats to play with, and many of them were sleeping in the no people zone. Overall, we'd recommend the perfect cat cafe as a fun afternoon outing to escape the stifling heat and humidity of a typical day in Georgetown. For breakfast this morning, we're having one of my all-time favorite foods, dim sum. And there are so many restaurants to choose from here in Georgetown, but I'm going to my favorite. Let's go. There's a recurring theme in most of our morning videos, and that's that I'm usually not awake and that I've been dragged out of bed to go do something. This morning, it's Chinese breakfast, again! <laughs> well, what have we got? I believe those are shrimp dumplings. Should I have a cup of tea, darling? You may, and this is very hot. Burning yourself for love. Yes, yes, yes. No, no dim sum meal is complete without a cup of tea. Sticky rice? Sticky rice. Oh, how about this one? Oh, speak one, yeah. Sam and his buns. Salmon They're buns. irresistible, aren't Barbecue they? Barbecue pork bun and red bean paste bun. fascinating aspects of eating at this dim sum restaurant is just how you order the food. All the different ladies come by pushing these different kinds of carts. Some of them are filled with dim sum, some of them are filled with towels, with different kinds of buns, some of them have porridge, all kinds of things. And you just pick them and put them right on the table and they have this little bill here and they check them off with the prices. So you can see our bill right now as it's shaping up. I'm sure we'll be ordering yeah, more. Yeah. And which one did you try just now? I got 
a shrimp and veggie one, and it is so tasty. I love it. One of my absolute favorites is the barbecue pork bun. It just has so much flavor. It's just wow, delicious. Mm. So we've been trying lots of different dim sums. I find that the fillings are very varied. You can get vegetables, pork, there's some with shrimp. And then you have all the sweet dim sum, which have like, which have a red Which are the ones taste. I like the most. Yes, the ones that I'm not a huge fan of. But again, <laughs> lots of variety. One of my favorite things about having dim sum is the social aspect. It's just, it's the kind of meal that you come and enjoy with friends over a cup of tea. I'm so full, yet I keep eating more. Sam is certainly in his element over here. Being back in UNESCO Heritage City, Malacca, Malaysia, on our one year travel anniversary, was the perfect chance for us to eat tally, an Indian meal made up of various dishes, typically including rice, dal, vegetables, roti, papad, chutney, and pickle. Lunchtime here in Malacca, and today we are eating at the Salabam Banana Leaf Restaurant, which is an Indian restaurant. And we've been here several times during the week. It's one of our favorite places so far, and it's really popular with locals. So we're going to show you what a tally set meal looks like. When I was backpacking in India three and a half years ago, I subsisted off of tally, so I'm thrilled to be having the opportunity to eat it again here in Malacca, Malaysia. Tali is an Indian meal that consists of various kinds of dishes. It can be served on a platter, or in this case, we're having it on a banana leaf. You can take a look at it down here. And it comes with different vegetables, curries, and rice. So typically you would eat this using your hand. However, someone has to hold the camera, so I'm going to be using cutlery and Sam will demonstrate how it's done the proper way. Alright, boy, dig in. Get them fingers dirty. We mix it around here. Everything else we got was the same. So we have the same dal, the same rice, and the same juice. We'll take a bite of that chicken. Let's see how it tastes. I already have a chunk here. Mm. It's very tender. You can tell it's been cooked slowly and for a long time. It's really good. Spicy? Of course, a bit of Indian spice in there. <laughs> One thing I absolutely love about tallies is the concept of the bottomless refills. You eat until you're fully satisfied. So that means if you go through your rice, if you finish your rice and you want more, you call them over and they load you up. Perfect for a hungry boy, right? <laughs> Our tally lunch came to 22 ringgit, which is roughly seven US dollars. And that included three jinks, two different tally sets, including a chicken and a vegetarian, and a roti pisang with a banana flatbread for dessert. Today we're here visiting Kek Loksi Temple, and this is the biggest Buddhist temple in all of Southeast Asia. In order for us to get here, we had to go through a bit of a market.
visiting the Temple of Supreme Bliss. And I'm feeling particularly blissful this morning. Let's have a look. temple took nearly 20 years to build and was funded almost entirely by donations and even today they're doing more renovations on a hilltop in Airy Tom and it offers excellent views of the city below. here combine Mahayana Buddhism and Chinese ritual. concludes our tour of the temples here. For anyone who would like to come, you can take the bus 201, 203, and 204 from the Complex Comptoir, basically the main mall in Georgetown. And it's about a 40 minute ride here. And the, overall the temples are pretty cool. A little bit, well actually not a little bit, very, very much commercial, but I guess that's to be expected. But enough about the temples, now it's time for lunch. Towers are brilliant by day, but wow, do they ever shine at night.
so this is now our third time coming to the Petronas Towers and having seen it during the day and at night, I have to say I prefer it at night a lot more. They have a really cool light show that takes place. There's also a lot more people who come to watch the show. Patronus Towers at night, a sight to behold. So today we are having dinner at a great little restaurant. It's located right across from the Puderaya bus terminal in Kuala Lumpur. And it's Indian food, my favorite. Nothing like refreshing food drinks to start your meal. Here's our food. Ooh, Ooh. Nice. Thank you. Delicious. Banana. Delicious. Uh, yeah. Delicious. 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 Chennai is actually the Malaysian form of the Indian flatbread. Oh, yeah. What we're having here is roti chanai. Roti means bread in Hindi and Malay. Chennai and Malay means to roll out here. How do you roll it out? Show us. Nice. It's made with fat, egg, flour, water. And in the special cases where there's special ingredients, like this one right here, <laughs> Sam's feeling a little shy because there's people watching him eat right now. Is it the freckles? Is it the t-shirt? Is it because he's using his hands? What could it be? <laughs> So you can get plain roti or you can get a little fancier with your order. They 
have banana roti, garlic roti, cheese roti. Egg as well. Egg roti, yes, I had that earlier. Lots of cheese from. One of the coolest things when you come here to the restaurant is the little bit you get. They just keep toweling it up here on the side. And eventually when you're finished feasting, they finally give you the total. So, this is a meal that you can have for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. We're having it for dinner right now, and I'm pretty sure I'll be coming back for breakfast. Get ready. We have our tickets in hand, and tonight we are going to be doing the Malacca River Cruise. right now because I've actually only walked along this area. I've never taken the boat and I've never done this at night. So this is awesome. Opposite the Cafe Cinema, Cinema is hung to Since I first came here back in 2008, there's been a lot of development in the, the bridge area. located near Hang Tuan Mall is appropriately the Hang Tuan Bridge. The Not any port, this bridge is decorated with many lights, which brighten the riverscape at night. It's lost a little bit of its charm in my opinion. So Today we are visiting a place that is an important part of Georgetown's heritage, the Clan Jetties. These are the last bastions of old Chinese settlements. One of the things that has surprised me most about visiting the clan jetties is that people live here with their pets, so even though their houses are on stilts above the water, they still keep dogs, cats, and it works. <laughs> and here we found some friendly little doggies. Yes. Leave it to me to find puppies. Hello, <laughs> cat. Fit in my backpack. <laughs> well, 
we've encountered a lot of friendly cats and dogs, but not this one. houses in this area are built on stilts over the water and they even have a temple. And here's a temple on stilts that we were looking to find. is now part of the Heritage Trail and it was established roughly 150 years ago. So there are several distinct jetties along this area. In fact there were seven at one time. One just burnt down and now we are visiting the Chew Jetty. How are we feeling? Feeling good, just resting on someone's porch, I imagine. The stilt villages here actually remind me quite a bit of the ones I visited while in Brunei, which are called the Kampong Ayer. And those are even quite a bit bigger, but these are still very fascinating. In the back of one of these jetties, there's the most random Santa Claus poster in the back. Hello, hello. So today we are visiting the botanical gardens just outside of Georgetown. If you look up over there, you can see some monkeys. Actually, there's another one there. That one's easier to spot. That looks like a bearded one. <laughs> Hi, monkey! Let's talk about travel mistakes. How did we mess up today? Well, guess what? I hardly brought any money today. And as we were taking the bus to come over to the botanical gardens, I just figured that out. I'm like, oh no, we're totally not going to be able to get in. But luckily, it's free. free. And that's good because I didn't have any money on me either. I never carry around cash. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> So we woke up kind of late this morning and we were worried that it was going to be too hot by the time we got here, but fortunately this place is so shady and lush and it's so much fresher than it is in Georgia. Especially in down the side trails. So much cooler, yes. We've been on a quest for the main waterfall and just as soon as we thought we found it, it's this humble little thing. Wow! 
How impressive! Amazing! This one is still not what like I envisioned, but I think it could be it. Looks a bit more grand. What do you think? Maybe, maybe. False alarm yet again is showing here. This is the way to the waterfall. All right, let's go find it. Snap time for the big boy. Well, third time's a charm. We have found the actual waterfalls that were outlined in the park guide, but not quite as we expected. A little bit puny. Little trickle. A trickle falls. Voila! Want to jump in for a dip? Ah. Nah. Time here in Malacca, so we're about to go to a Babanonia type of restaurant, which is a mix of Chinese and Malaysian cuisine. And this is a real hole in the wall kind of place. It is. Spicy curry, a mixture of Malay and Chinese elements. So let's, let's take a look. Here. It is coconut based curry soup and it has curd puffs, fish sticks, shrimp, clams added to it. Very flavorful. Mm. So, what I'm having next is called rojak. That's a, the Malay word for mixture. It's a refreshing salad. Yes, so take a look over here. And it's made using fruits and vegetables. So it has pineapple, cucumbers, bean sprouts. It's just a really nice, refreshing salad on a hot day. Oh yeah. oh yeah. The last of our four dishes is called papaya. It is a spring roll, has an outside like a crepe. And I'll show you the ingredients here. It is, has a sweet bean and soy sauce. It often has turnips, bean sprouts, Sort of omelet type carrots, lettuce, tofu, peanuts on top. It's got everything going on. Take a bite. Classy. When the lime juice is here. Beat the heat, we have some lime juice. Is that refreshing? So what's been your favorite dish so far? I actually like this one here, the, the Nonia dumpling. Oh. I've never had this one before. I've tried the others, but this is my first time. Okay, take a big bite and tell us why you like it. Right, if I can. <laughs> Struggling. Struggling. Well, what I really like about the gluten is rice. There's a really unique kind of like coating for the dumpling. Also, it's quite sweet. It's like hard to go around with sweet foods when it comes to me and my taste buds. <laughs> <laughs> and 
much is Miss Audrey's favorite? Well, I've really enjoyed the rice dumplings as well, but I think my absolute favorite has been this salad over here. I haven't eaten fresh fruits and vegetables in almost a year because in Korea they cost a fortune, so I'm in heaven right now. I'm just eating on... What you got right now? Pineapple? Which one? Yeah, this is a pineapple. Mm, mm -hmm. Nice sweet treat and the coating on the salad is delicious as well. It's a sweet sauce with peanuts on top, so it's just perfect. God. One of the top things to do when you're visiting Georgetown is to take a rickshaw tour and that's exactly what we're going to do. This is our colorful little ride right here. Sorry, what's your name? Harry. Harry, nice to meet you. Bye. <laughs> Some mighty big waves coming here. Oh. Oh. So we got soaked by a massive wave. We sure did. And it's actually kind of refreshing now, so I'm kind of happy about it. And our camera survived it, so not too bad actually. <laughs> So this is a Chinese temple? Yeah, and very old temple. Oh wow. 100 years old, more than So a tour around historic Georgetown will reveal some crumbling colonial architecture as Audrey likes to say. No, I don't. Here is St. George Church. English come here, this is a black car. Oh, they drive Before this the car. Before the British come here, the governor, British governor used the car. Oh, that's, oh, that's the, the old governor's car. Malaysia. Where are you? So this is the old train that used to travel up Penang Hill carrying passengers up. Bamboo ship. A bamboo wow. ship, yeah. wow. This is Kasi Mustafa, one of our favorite restaurants in Georgetown to get roti. Yeah, and yeah. it is noticeable for its bright green and yellow paint.
and final stop, our hotel. Penang is known for its distinct neighborhoods and none is more colorful than Little India.